Hello and welcome to how to make a treasure chest. So in this episode we're going to go through a process of creating a treasure chest asset that can open and close. So let's go into creating our blueprint here. We need a blueprint class and actor and we're going to call this one our treasure chest. Inside our treasure chest we'll have a few components. So whenever you're making these sort of interactive elements, you do need to add multiple components to it. Uh, in this case, for the treasure chest, we need the base and we need the lid. So we need a static mesh component for the base. I'm going to call that one the base. And on the right hand side, I'm going to choose a base model that I've got imported in from an asset pack that I've got. So do asset base 01. And there it is. I'm then going to make another static mesh component. And this one's going to be the lid. Uh, so rename that one to lid and change that to lid there. Now you will notice that it isn't positioned correctly and it is currently attached to the base here. So we need to detach it from the base first of all. So just drag it so they're in line with each other, no longer indented. Therefore I can reposition this at will. At the moment the lid is in the wrong place so what i'm going to do is i'm going to move this up and across to where i want the hinges to be and if you're fortunate enough to have the axis here at the hinge already that's great you just move it there otherwise you can use a proxy using a scene component so attach to the scene component then move the scene component to the hinge itself but i don't need to do that in this case because the hinge is in the correct place there so as i rotate this object we can test it, we can see how it's going to rotate and look. So we can hit compile on that and we're going to have a box collision around it as well. This box collision is going to act as the trigger around the whole entire chest so that when we walk into it the chest will open. So again I'm going to detach that from the lid there and just move that around into where I want the trigger volume to be and I'm going to put it just in front of the the, uh, the box there okay so once I've done that I'm going to go into my event graph and create the events so I'm just going to right click and do uh, a custom event and this is going to be called open chest and with the open chest we're going to create a timeline now timelines are very useful to have a value change over time such as the position of a rotation so I'm going to call this one uh, chest opening and we're going to open this up by double clicking on the timeline in here we can add a float track by clicking on the little f up here the float track will add a track here which is like a graph and you can name it so i'm going to add this one as a lid position now for this i want it to be a normalized value going between zero and one one being open zero being shut so we're going to add a new key here by holding down shift and left clicking setting the time for this first one at zero and value at zero and then I'm going to shift click again and we're going to change the time to one and the value to one as well click these little buttons next to the time and value options this will actually expand and show the full length of the graph change the length up top here from five seconds down to one second so it brings it in nice and snug with the graph in view so now we've got this graph value, this means it's going to open and shut um, linearly. So it's not going to do anything special, it's just going to go linear. Uh, I can go back to my event graph and hit compile. So the chest opening timeline is going to output that value through this float track here, lid position. That's what we named it, so that's where it is here. So what I'm going to do is take my lid component and I'm going to set relative rotation and I'm going to plug that into the update there. Now the rotation here is going to be a value from the float here multiplied by a rotator. So we're going to take a, a multiply here and we do a scale rotator. The scale rotator will plug into the new rotation and we're going to change the x, y and z value here uh, based on what rotation we want the lid to actually be. So to know that for certain go back to your viewport, click on the lid and rotate it into a final position so I want mine to open that far take note of the final rotation up here in the details you'll see rotation here in my case is set to minus 120 
that's the final position I want it to be here. Make sure you reset that back to default and go back to event graph and put in the X here to match that value, minus 120. So now, when it's zero, we're going to scale this by zero and therefore have no rotation. And when it gets to the end, it will be timed it by one, therefore be full rotation. And that will happen on the opening chest here. So the last thing I'm going to do is make it actually trigger this. So I'm going to look at the actor begin overlap event. And we're going to do a check to see if the other actor is that in fact the player character. So equals there. And drag out from there, get player character. And put that into a branch. There we go. So once it's done that, we know we're going to call our open chest event. We compile and close that. So now let's add this to our map here. So I'm going to add it into my scene here. And leave it like so. Play. Walk up to my chest here and up it pops okay so you can actually mess about with the timeline and get some different effects with the animation so let's just go into that and demonstrate that we're going to chest opening i can give it a little bit of a wobble so at the start it is a lot slower and then it will peak up and back down again and then i can even give these a little curve as well so i can select these two points right click on these points and do auto and you'll add curves to it which is a quite nice little feature there and at the end i give it a little jostle so like it's an old creaky uh uh old creaky um chest move that along there add another point and um, set this one here from one one i'm gonna right click on this one and set that to be a linear and this one to be linear as well Like that like so and another shift point in here bring this down so you get actually let's bring it up a little bit more so it stretches out beyond a little bit and then back bounces back so hopefully we get a neat little effect yeah you get like a sort of stuttering chest event okay so that is the opening and then finally to make it do the closing I'm going to the event graph here and we're going to do a custom event here for closed chest and we're going to put that into reverse and then our event for this is going to be when we end overlap which will be basically the same as our begin overlap we're going to do end overlap and just copy and paste what we've got here here And then we just call the closed chest at the end. Now, when I walk up to it, it'll open. When, it, when I walk away, it'll close. And there you have it. And then you can go further and add particle effects. You can add sound effects. You can do whatever you want with it. But there you go. That's how you make a simple chest uh, asset. If you want to know how to do doors, it's pretty much the exact same uh, process as this. You can actually use this same process for quite a few things. So have a look and think about what you could do this same technique with. I'd uh, be interested to see and hear what you guys are doing with this stuff. So excellent to be able to hear that in the comments below. Thanks again for watching. If you want to watch more content like this, head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Ailey. You can find all my content all from just $1 a month early before anyone else. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye everyone.